Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, May 24th, 2023. Well, I guess uh, for this video, you know, I've been a little busy, unfortunately. Uh, my uncle died up in North Carolina. I wish I could go up for the funeral, but I just can't make it happen. But I hope they'll post it online. Uh, we'll see. In the meantime, I've put together a montage. And, you know, one of the things that I'm wondering... And that the first video clip here kind of explains things. You know, are we being run by traitors? You know, I, I do. It does seem like that our government is doing everything it can to empower the Chinese and the Russians to destroy the United States. I mean, how else can you explain it? I mean, this military hardware we just sent in to go into uh, Russia... Uh, it was all destroyed within, what, a, a short period of time. Actually, they captured a lot of it. And so we're going to start the video tonight with a clip. Is this confession through progress, uh, projection? Confession through projection. In other words, you are accusing your enemy of doing exactly what you're doing. And it sure does look to me like the Democrats are doing everything they can to help the Chinese, to help the Russians, to 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 destroy the United States in every way, shape, and fashion. I'll let you watch the video. You make your own determination. Также отдельно хотелось бы поблагодарить Францию, Турцию и Британию за предоставленную технику. Реально, если бы не вы, то мы никогда бы на ней бы не покатались. Спасибо большое. И, пользуясь случаем, хочу попросить НАТО по возможности гуманитарный груз класть майонез. Мы все получаем, но майонеза, к сожалению, там нет. Yeah, evidently the Russians really like mayonnaise. Back in the day, I would have been this dude. Look at him, he's climbing over the rubble. I mean, any of that stuff could fall apart at any second. He just, it, 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 he's risking his life just to hang a flag. But it means a lot to him. The fall of Bakhmut. Now Russian hands on the Munafs. Let's see, we have never fought a war like this. When you go up against another superpower, you've got our navy, you've got an air force, you've got air defenses. We've taken on Iraq, we've taken on Afghanistan, we've taken on Libya, we've taken on Syria, but never before have we taken on major military powers like Russia and China with their own navies and their own nuclear weapons. And this is where your neocon idiots have led you to. think that Iran has these types of weapons? Yes, they are accumulating them. Do you think North Korea has these types of weapons? Yes, they are accumulating them. The United States and the West. Well, we're facing annihilation if we don't turn back and sue for peace in the world.
Угломяю эту часть красную. Fire and maneuver. Fire and maneuver before the enemy can pinpoint your location. You think China's worried about the United States? Most of the world hates the United States now, but I'm sure the American people have no clue. You wonder why Russian propaganda is at its best. Now, whether that's propaganda or truth, you make your own decision. That's the beauty of independent media. I'm just presenting you with video for you to consider. So, I guess this is life in Crimea, huh? Looks pretty good to me. I love all the Z's, huh? <laughs> I did videos on what the Z means. The adopted symbol for the war from Russia. There's the Wagner, all the Wagner stuff. And there's the V. So I'm only going to give about the first minute of this video. You know, when I was young and stupid, um, you know, we always looked at war as like, you know, this this great thing where, you know, it's nothing but intense battles and you watch the movies and, you know, you're constantly just destroying the enemy and fighting for good and fighting for mankind. Nope. This is what really war is. And I thought this was a very good uh, description of what it's all about. Противника нет тут такого. Саблю на голову с буденовкой и от плеча и дальше до пахотом. Разрубать одним ударом красоты нет. Нет никакого вот такого подъема эмоционального рутина, тяжелая работа, сменяемость день, ночь, сутки, ротация за ротацией, периодические потери. Это беззащитность. Yeah, when I was in Iraq, I mean, we just went. 12-hour day after 12-hour day. <coughs> it was brutal. Artillery, absolute уязвимость, потому что ничего не спасает, если противник эффективно работает артиллерией. Рыть надо землю, говоришь, копать, чего-то надо, какие-то надо перекрытия ложить. Yeah, I remember at first we were diving for the, um, the bunkers um, because there were dug-in bunkers that we would hide in, but you know, eventually, after the sirens have gone off about a million times, you just like, you know what? <laughs> I'm just not going to. It's too damn hot. 
If I die, I die. I'm not going to run to the damn bunkers. Это все не спасает, потому что противник может подловить на моменте производства ротации, когда люди на поверхности. Летают птицы, все видят, корректируют. И они постоянно в напряжении. You can notice how fast you go through ammunition. And that's an entire barrel. Fire and move. Fire and move. Because now that they've, they've lit up the target, whatever it was, target's going to be firing back. It's coming away. Я пошел служить из-за дочки. У дочки была та тревогика, когда мне в дом попала. Разбила крышу. Я нашла, увидела эти осколки, все. Папа говорит, это сделано, дым. Жопу набить. Ну вот, папа и пошел. И 16 года на службе. Жена против была, конечно. Там чуть ли до развода не доходила. Детки у меня думают, что папа стоит на блокпосту. Why are we there? Why is the United States in Ukraine? Other than bioweapons labs, a lot of kickback money to the politicians, Democrat and Republican. Imagine he's been fighting since 2016, non-stop. Look how good he is with that weapon. The United States and NATO, we do not care how many Ukrainians die. Not civilians, not women, not children, not soldiers. We do not care. We are, it, it's, it's become a great football game. Uh, you know, we've got our team, they've got our team, rah, rah. We want to get the biggest score and run it up. And, uh, you know, we don't care how many, how many of our players get, uh, get uh, crippled on the, on the playing field uh, as long as we win. Now, we are shipping fantastic quantities of weapons. Um, and uh, it's written, it's, it's uh, caused folks. If we get attacked here in the United States, missiles, we are not going to have the weapons to defend ourselves. Aircraft and so forth. This is what the missiles, Biden administration is doing. Uh, this is what the Democrats want. They're setting you up to be with, destroyed. With, uh, tax dollars. I don't think it's ultimately going to change the outcome. I think that. Uh, I think that Russia will prevail. Uh, the Ukrainians are in a very awkward strategic position uh, in the east. Um, but uh, if you if you look at the way that this unfolded, President Putin made a desperate effort to to stop. The march towards war. This was back in March. He only sent 50,000 troops. He went so far as to put specific written proposals on the table with NATO. That was before the war. Proposals to to defuse what was coming about, because at this point, Ukraine was massing troops to attack the Donbass. Uh, and uh, so. He was trying to head this off. He didn't want war. And uh, NATO just blew it off, just dismissed it, uh, never took it seriously, never went into serious negotiations. At that point, Putin, seeing that 
uh, that armed Ukrainians with weapons to kill Russian troops were literally on their borders, decided he had to strike first. Now, you could see that this was not, this was not some pre-planned attack. This was not like, uh, like Hitler's attack into Poland, uh, where the, the, the standard rule of thumb is that you always have a three to one advantage when you are the attacker. You have to mass three times as many tanks and, and artillery and planes and men as the other side has. In fact, when Russia went in, they, they went in sort of with what they had, what they could cobble together on short notice, and they were outnumbered by the Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainian forces had about 250,000. Right, we had built the up Russians the Ukrainian military to massive proportions. Um, Russia only went in with so 50,000. instead of having three times as many, they actually had fewer troops than the Ukrainians, and but they were forced to attack to try to preempt the battle that was was looming, where right the Ukrainians the, were going to Ukrainians destroy the Donbass region. Forces against the Donbass. Now the Donbass is adjacent to Russia. I remember, there had been a civil war going on there for a portion of Ukraine since 2014. Did not join uh, with the revolutionary government that conducted the coup in 2014 and overthrew the, the government of, of Ukraine, uh, they, they refused to become a part of the new revolutionary uh, government of Ukraine. And uh, so they, de they declared their independence. And uh, Ukraine had massed this enormous army to attack against the Donbass. All given and to so them by Russia NATO and the United Ukraine States. Where do you think all that, that army uh, came from? That planned attack by Ukraine. And uh, you could see that Russia very much hoped that they could conduct this special operation without unduly causing casualties for the Ukrainians because they they, they think of the Ukrainians, or at least they did think of the Ukrainians as, as brother Slavs uh, that uh, they, they wanted to have good relations. But it, there, there was a famous picture with a, a Russian tank that had been stopped by a gathering of maybe 40 civilians who just walked out in the road and blocked the road and the tank stopped. I can tell you. In Vietnam, if we had uh, a bunch of people who, who stood in the way of an American tank going through, that tank would not have slowed down in the slightest. It wouldn't have honked a horn. It wouldn't have done anything. wouldn't have fired a warning shot. It would have just gone on. And, and, uh, and, and I think that's more typical. I'm not, I'm not criticizing the Americans. Uh, I, I, would, I was there and I was fighting and I probably would have would have driven the tank straight through myself. But what I'm saying is that the, the rules of engagement for the Russians were very, very cautious. They didn't want to create a great deal of hatred and animosity. They, the Russians did not go in. They did not bomb uh, the electrical system, the, the media systems, uh, the water systems. Yeah. All of these, That's only the, happening now. The bridges and so forth. They tried a to year later. Uh, the infrastructure of Ukraine in good shape because they they wanted it to get back. They just wanted this to be over with and get back to normal. <clears throat> it didn't work. The Ukrainians, the, the resistance was unexpectedly uh, hard. Uh, the Ukrainian soldiers fought with with great great valor, great heroism. And, uh, and so now the, the, the game has been upped and it's become much, much more. If you watch my serious. videos, they've been brainwashed by their but, schooling uh, to hate it, the Russians. They to weren't going to stop. And, and to they wanted Russia destroyed. Russia dominates the air. They haven't knocked out 
the train systems they haven't knocked out power plants they haven't knocked out uh so many things they never bombed the uh uh the the buildings in the center of kiev they you know the the capital of uh of ukraine they haven't bombed the the buildings where the parliament meets uh they, they've been incredibly reserved about these things hoping against hope that peace of course they're also you know but I don't think massaging the world of public opinion you know if they went in and just destroyed those administrative buildings then the whole world might turn against them so they got to be very careful on how they conduct the war uh, as long as we want the war to continue we will fight that war using Ukrainians as proxies and we will fight it to the last Ukrainian death well, that's for sure. <laughs> we will certainly fight it to the last Ukrainian. I'm surprised they're willing to do it. You know, I've often wondered why more Ukrainians don't surrender. But it's tough, man. I mean, you think about it. There's a lot. There's high. Hey, think about it. Somebody's trying to kill you, man. They're trying to kill you. And these guys are just trying to survive, man. They're trying to surrender. But the Russians, they don't know. They don't know. Are these guys going to turn on? Are they going to shoot at them? Who knows? Остальные руки выше, бля. Контроль, бак. Контроль. Первый на месте, второй броню скинул, бля. Броню скидывай, второй. Все, вперед. Третий на месте, бля. Now, if these guys were smart, I would just lay down on the ground, put my hands by my head and say, I'm going to lay here until you come get me. Because if you're marching forward, they don't know if you've got a grenade. You don't know if they're rigged for a bomb. They don't know if they've got guns. Yeah, there you go. See, there you go. That's what you do. That's what you do. Whether you're facing uh, police, whether you're facing military, that's how you surrender. All right, here's the footage of the invasion of Russia by Ukraine. That was all that U.S. military equipment getting blown up. So if you wonder what the Russians have been up to, this is why their forces have been held in reserve. This is the training you don't get in the U.S. military, I can guarantee you that. This is an entire area blocked off. I mean, it's kind of like the Mojave Desert. It's huge. And they've built actual trenches and everything to, to simulate combat in Ukraine. Our ear drums ring as the tank swiftly hides back behind the brick wall. We are in the midst of a battle simulation. Russian trainees operate in a makeshift town. According to the scenario, enemy tanks are advancing from the nearby fields. The target is over a kilometer away. This test site is larger than Johannesburg and Berlin combined, and no territory is put to waste. Look at this. Not far from the brick town, the land this is... This is what the Russians have put into training. It's hard to count how many positions identical to this one I've witnessed in the fields and forests 
of the Donbass and all the stories that I've heard from Russian soldiers explaining how challenging and how perilous the fights for every single one of these trenches are. Tens of thousands of volunteers and mobilized soldiers have graduated from this place. Sure, no simulation can be as real as an actual battle, but it can come close. I got some grenade throwing stories. <laughs> Someday I'll tell, I think I've told them to you in previous videos, but anyway, the one that I always had was the guy threw it, it landed on top, and it bounced across the top and fell into my, my pit. We would have been blown up with the fact that I had a good uh, staff sergeant. He dove on that grenade, grabbed it, and threw it before it could blow up. Saved my life. Everything happening here is Russia's response to the challenges its army has faced in Ukraine. And it has faced plenty. With German leopards and British challenges already on the front in the Donbass, Russia is not brushing aside this threat. It's but nothing better than training with live ammo. In its own anti-tank crews. NATO's tanks are not the only potential game changer on the Donbass front line Russia has to counter. Kamikaze drones are rapidly becoming a huge thing. We were lucky to see some of Russia's experimental prototypes in action. In Ukraine, if you hear this very distinctive approaching buzz... You know, back in my day, we didn't have this threat. But I can't imagine the fear that the... Operator you come up a messed up wreck. You, you gotta look We're up, you gotta look down, you gotta look sideways. We have the unique opportunity Horrible to fight to in these conditions. We really have the front row seats witnessing the Russian drone snipers honing their skills. This time the drone carried an innocent smoke bomb. In the Donbass it will of course be armed with something much deadlier. This is what's coming Ukraine's way. 500,000 pissed off Russians fully trained on all the latest hardware. In fact, since last year, there are developments that have no comparison in the world. There are heavy drones, heavy equipment, and unique engines with high energy conversion efficiency for drones and other equipment, electric, hybrid, and even hydroelectric developments that have already been tested. Therefore, were definitely ahead in some areas, as last year's exhibitions and tests on this technology showed. Do you see that building over there, about eight kilometers away? The developer asks me. No, not really. Well, with this device, you can, he responds with a smirk. With over a hundred times zoom, I'd be able to make out the clothes a person is wearing in a window. But before anyone gets access to real live ammo, they receive Look at the simulation facility. Training. This warehouse This is insane. T72 tanks. I never saw anything like this in the US military. See everything exactly as they would in a real machine. This is this is unbelievable. These people are so ready for combat. We are in the simulator training complex where the tank company conducts a comprehensive training session on the T-72 B3 tank simulators. They can be used to simulate any situation, in any season, in any theater of war, at any time of day. This is where the simulation exercises are carried out. There are foreign-made ATGMs and javelins here. We study their tactical and technical characteristics, such as action and counteraction with the staff. This when was the last time you saw some U.S. military officer talk about our training facilities like this? Missile systems and Russia's Never. most advanced anti-tank guided missiles. Folks, we're seeing the death of the Here U.S. We empire. We operator training on the Cornet Simulator, which is critical now that the Leopard tanks have appeared in the war zone. The Cornet missile has armor-piercing capabilities of 1,000 millimeters, making the Leopard less of an obstacle. A Cornet with this modification has a range of five and a half kilometers, up to 10 kilometers, on the battlefield. And of course, any training would be incomplete without the cornerstone course. First aid, there's no way really one could overestimate its importance. 
Uh, it's funny how I'm still alive. <laughs> They're talking about the first hour. The first hour is critical in any sort of brutal energy. Somehow I survived 12 hours with a broken neck and then woke up and still called the uh, paramedics after climbing a set of stairs with a broken neck. I don't know. God's with me, people. God's with me. These wounds include both gunshot wounds and shrapnel wounds. The first thing to do is to stop the bleeding. We have a concept called the golden hour. This the golden to hour, that's what I was talking about. Ourselves before losing consciousness. Since the start of the year, over 117,000 volunteers joined the ranks of the Russian army. All of them have to be properly trained before deployment. The commanders at this test site have heaved the most of this burden on their shoulders. And it's hard to imagine a facility fit better for the purpose. Amigashdana reporting for RT. Last night, the Armed Forces of the Russian Federation launched a group strike by high-precision, long-range, air-based weapons against facilities of the Dnepr airfield. The purpose of the strike has been achieved. All the assigned targets have been destroyed. As a result of the strike, hangars with weapons and ammunition, aviation equipment, as well as technical missile preparation position were hit. In the Kupiansk direction, aviation, artillery and troops of the Zapad group of forces have engaged the units of the armed forces of Ukraine close to Dvorichnaya, Masutovka, Sinkovka, Kotlarovka and Krahmalnoye of Kharkov region. In addition, actions of three sabotage and reconnaissance groups of the armed forces of Ukraine were thwarted. Yeah, that's, that new, that's the new uh, artillery. Well, Russia just keeps improving their hardware, don't they? Two motor vehicles and one the 30 howitzer have been neutralized during the day. An ammunition depot of the 103rd Territorial Defense Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces has been eliminated close to the. We just keep hearing about these ammo depots. What the hell is Ukraine fighting with? Operational tactical and dummy aviation, artillery and heavy flamethrower systems of the Central Group of Forces engaged the units of the Armed Forces of Ukraine close to Nevskoye, Chervonaya Dibrova of Lugansk People's Republic and Grigorovka of Donetsk People's Republic. Up to 55 Ukrainian troops, two armored fighting vehicles. Well, there you go, 55 vehicles, Ukrainians one dead. One the three howitzer were destroyed. In the Donetsk direction, the U group of forces, aviation and artillery have eliminated up to 270 Ukrainian troops. Four so armored that's fighting 200 vehicles, plus 55, so one what the 20 and 255. Two in the south Donetsk and Zaporozhye directions, aviation and artillery of the Vostok group of forces inflicted a fire damage on the Ukrainian units close to Shevchenko of Donetsk People's Republic, Marfopol, Malaya Tokmachka and Nesteryanka of Zaporozhye region. One sabotage and reconnaissance group of the armed forces of Ukraine has been disabled close to Novodonetskoye of Donetsk People's Republic. More than 150 Ukrainian servicemen, two pickup trucks, and okay, two Okay, so now we're up to 400 dead Ukrainians. Ukrainians. Moreover, an ammunition depot of the 65th Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces was destroyed close to Orekhov of Zaporozhye region. In the Kherson direction, the fire damage has neutralized over 20 Ukrainian servicemen, four motor vehicles, okay, one Gelsinkiga and one Stabi Howitzer during the day. In addition, one ammunition depot of the 123rd Territorial Defense Brigade was destroyed near Stanislav of Kherson region. Operational tactical and dummy aviation and artillery of the Russian group of forces have engaged 98 Ukrainian artillery units, manpower and military equipment in 107 areas during the day. Air defense facilities have shot down one Mi-8 helicopter of the Ukrainian Air Force near Lozovoye of Donetsk People's Republic. In addition, five HIMARS MLRS projectiles have been intercepted. 17 Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles have been destroyed in the areas of Kremenets, Pesky, Alexandrovka, Vesoloye of Donetsk People's Republic, Sladkaya Balka, Marfopol of Zaporozhye region, Sergeyevka and Lubimovka of Kherson region. In total, 428 airplanes, 235 helicopters, 4,260. All right, let's read the numbers. 428 airplanes, 235 helicopters, 4,262 unmanned aerial vehicles. Folks, how much American taxpayer dollars do you want to spend on this war? I, I kind of think it's a bad idea, but, you know, that's up to you. 424 air defense missile systems, 9,257 tanks and other armored fighting vehicles. 1,100 multiple rocket launchers. Good God. How, do we have anything left of, like, 
fight a war here in the United States. I, you know, I'm thinking that the entire Pentagon has thrown everything we got into Ukraine uh, just to fight Russia for, for what? I mean, was Russia our enemy? I, I don't know. They were giving oil to Europe. I mean, it seems to me they were just trying to survive and sell their other goods to around the world. And, uh, and then, you know, all of a sudden uh, we wanted to fight them. But anyway, 4,881 field artillery cannons and mortars. 10,379 special military motor vehicles. Good God. Well, it's good, good, good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious.